hey, hey, my eyes, yeah, they're up here. I know, I know, I'm feeling very much like Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife today. But the amount of times that I scream, no, absolutely not, you are definitely not in love, and can you please just be a tad bit more smarter than you are now at the screen while I watch Love is Blind is astounding. It took me for a roller coaster ride, and I just had to strap up because it was wild. The dogs were absolutely pissed too while watching it. Rigby kept barking, and so did Yoshi. And now, it's your turn. Get your bra, get your corset. It gets crazy and very stupid. <laughs> Marriage. Many would say marriage is, is sacred, a commitment, right? And a contract between two people who contain the utmost amount of love for each other. Some still say that it's the woman's most important day of her life. It's not something to be taken lightly. Well, Love is Blind, a reality show, takes the sanctity of marriage and makes a whole joke out of it in about 10 episodes. Full of drama. I want you to show me that you love me and you don't. Oh, for real? Heartbreak. Just the marriage thing. Can I just be with one person? Professing each other's undeniable love for each other are everything I've ever wanted in my entire life. Oh, I know. And of course, a proposal. And it all happens within the next 10 days, you all will have the opportunity to fall in love based solely on who you are on the inside. 10 days and they will find a wife. I'm feeling excited that I've got a wife on the other side. It's amazing. Love is Blind has to be the most dramatic and dumb reality show with the most delusional people on it that I've ever seen and I absolutely love all of it. And honey, I'm gonna break the whole season down for you in this video because I don't think you have over 10 hours to spare. And honestly, once you take out the drama, it's just a lot of awkward I love you. Cause I love you. Falling to the floors and musical transition. Bring me the concept of the show is very simple. Place a bunch of drunk people in a room where they talk to the opposite sex in another room through a wall and they will find love just by hearing a voice. And, and what this does is take out all the complications like uh, appearance and wanting to have with someone from the beginning because of their appearance. Is love truly blind? Spoiler. It's not. The show starts with 30 people, but don't worry, you only need to know about 11. And yes, I did give them nicknames. Clay, Blinky, Big Dog, Brock, Autumn Dude, Laura, Jimmy, SpongeBob Head, Chelsea, Megan Fox. I don't need to explain that one. You've seen the viral clip, but we'll get there. Brittany, Jesus Girly, Kenneth, Mr. Dolphin. And the dolphin I had, his name was Ken. Amy, Jessica, Matthew, Joe from Netflix, but he calls himself Superman. Superman had a cold personality to start off to. <laughs> Amber Desiree, Jeremy, Sarah Ann, and Trevor, the misunderstood Gym bro. I'm a big guy into fitness. I feel like a lot of women judge me before they get to know my inner personality. So Nick Lachey and his wife want the contestants to know and make sure that they understand that this show is serious and you will find love and find somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with. You'll get engaged and then you meet your fiance for the very first time. Throughout the show, they like to tell us that as well, that these contestants are in love. They are getting married. Guys, in just four weeks, you'll be at your wedding. And this is definitely forever. I love you. But the first step to all of that is to take it into the pod. The pods are now open. open. The pods are where contestants will speak to each other so they can fall in love with each other's hearts instead of their ass. At a warning label, what would it say? Uh, does not do laundry. Don't worry about him. This is the only time watchers will ever see Justin Waller Jr. All the girls meet, all the boys meet. Everybody's super excited as they have not met anyone the old fashioned way. The dating scene is extremely shallow. Don't worry about him either. You don't find nobody here. He has never seen again. What are you looking for in a marriage? Best friend on paper, but also huge sexual, emotional attraction. Are you like a nympho? They're all having a great time connecting through a wall, except for Matthew. You know, having conversations about our emotions is probably not somewhere I, where I would excel. Well, that sucks because he brought a whole list of perfectly crafted questions for his future wife and everything. I have questions written down and they're numbered one through 15. Get then you think you excel at in relationships. My loyalty and devotion to my partner. Unfortunately, even his questions were a little too difficult for him, the one who made the questions. What about you? You know, I was just gonna ask the questions. I wasn't really anticipating getting the same one back. So Matthew's not grasping or understanding the purpose of this whole experiment. It's not going through. This experiment, I didn't really know what to expect. Who cares if there's five other seasons of this show, along with Google, along with many YouTubers who cover it, and it's the same each time, but that's okay. Matthew is frustrated with the whole concept that he agreed to. Yep, just dude talking to the wall. Throughout the whole experiment, Matthew seems fairly bored with the conversation and just whips out his book and starts reading. And eventually stumps on out of the room. Um, 
you're gonna be judged is always a little bit everyday life people judge too. You know? Are you there? No. Matt can kiss my ass. Talking about love and all this stuff, and sometimes I even feel uncomfortable even saying that word. Why are you even here on a show called Love is Blind, sir? The name Love is in the title. Nick makes it very clear that you're gonna say the word at least once. Well, it looked pretty grim for Matthew, but then he meets JD voice. I'm Matthew. Hey, Matthew. And she doesn't even let him ask a question from his constructed list. What are you looking for? Yeah, right off the bat, eh? Yeah. Got him first. I'm certainly not doing this to become a C-list celebrity. Well, that's great news because it didn't happen. But what did happen is JD helped this angry, book grasping, walking out mid-conversation, list making man who doesn't understand the concept of a show that's got the concept in the title to open up and soften out. This is like so awkward for my personality. Like I'm a small town country boy. Give me a little more time and I think maybe I can win you over or maybe somebody else. Is that something you want to do, win me over? I'm gonna try. Woo! And a love story has begun right in front of our eyes. So Chelsea connects with Trevor and Jimmy. Hi, what's your name? My name is Chelsea. My dog's name is Chelsea. Amy connects with Johnny. Don't worry about them. Very boring. Kenneth and Brittany connect, also boring. Laura and Sarah match with Jeremy, also boring until the end. Jess connects with only Jimmy. That's fucking hot, Jess. The loud horn nose blow didn't scare her away at all. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is this a joke? But she does have a secret that might scare Jimmy away. I have a 10 year old daughter. Yeah, she's a single mom. That's her whole secret. Say something, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, say something, anything at this point. Important part of my life. Are you interested? Are you not interested? There's certain conversations we can't have without you knowing that first. You absolutely hate children. Do you hate single moms like podcast bros? Something, anything, blow your nose again at this point. Uh. I like you a lot and I'd like to like to just hear more about it. Well, that sounds like a man that is very sure and confident and definitely means what he just said. And lastly, JD connects with Clay. Welcome, ladies. This is Smooth 107.1. And Matthew. And these two are surprisingly falling in love faster than any other couple on the show. They both are having these just very connected, deep conversations. Matthew keeps opening up to JD and he finally put down his damn book and sprawled out on the couch, loving him. Some JD even says, girl, we can leave together right now. That's how much the small town reading book man knows that she is the one. Something about you, Matthew. I feel like you're gonna shock me. And JD's and Matthew's love story would blossom and then fall into the pit of hell by episode two. So Matthew has been whispering the same sweet nothings to someone named Amber. I don't believe a word that comes out of any of these men's mouths. Uh-oh. Smoke to the ash and you're gonna get burned. Not him taking a sip out of his cup like an evil villain, that plan is slowly unfolding. Anyway, obviously it got tarnished because women talk and now JD's pissed. With Matthew, I'm feeling like hella goofy. Well, time for the pods again. JD's other interest keeps asking her what she looks like while he plays with his foot and then experiences what it smells like by sniffing his hand. Ew. Naturally, I, I would say I kind of lean towards more like petite. My, my favorite attribute is like lips, butt and all that stuff. That sounds like so shallow and all that, but. Well, it's because you chose to be on a dating show that's called uh, Love is Blind. That's why. Clay is pestering JD to confirm whether she has a fat ass and a slim waist. If, if I'm a propose, that's something I need to know. And then he gets pissed when he hears that she's talking to another guy on the show. Well, what love triangle am I in? We could have that transparent convo. On a show where you talk to multiple people and he starts pacing around the room like the true, not emotional alpha male he is. But he gets extra pissed to find out that it's Matthew. It's me and you and Matthew. Then he loses it. My fucking God. You gonna regret that shit, I'm, I'm telling you. So you think this guy is better than me? I don't understand, like, like, am I not like saying the right things to you? This is a clear reflection of me. How can the woman that I love for about a day love Matthew, the guy that reads? Can't even, fa I really can't even Adam. What do I do to make sure I'm the only guy even though you don't know me and also do you have a fat 
fast because that's the only way that I'll propose to you. Well, her other option isn't doing much better either. She ends up confronting Matthew right off the bat about him saying the same thing to Amber. She was very open and candid about the things that you were saying and it just kind of sounded exactly what you said to me. Huh, I wonder how Matthew will fend for himself to show the woman he is extremely into, so much so that he said that they can leave right now. I wanted to leave with you yesterday. You did want to leave with me yesterday. Okay. And start their life of true loving bliss. That's not true. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, and then he says, uh, if I propose to you. The moment would be one of the greatest moments of, of your life. Oh, and then I did forget this one too. Did you? No, I didn't say that to her. Yes, he did. Don't give up on me. She did. And somehow Matthew flips the whole thing and in the next time he meets JD, he decides that he is the victim here. How are you? <sighs> Going through it. The fact that he thinks that he is somehow the odd man out, the man that was never given a real chance and people will watch this show and know that he's just a special boy. You know, America, they do love a good underdog and they do love comeback. I think I now got the entire country of America on my side. Yeah, that was actually the face America was making after that line. Well, Amber ended up just leaving as he, as Matthew was the only guy that she connected with. And since Matthew's only other option was JD and she's hanging by the thread of his bullshit, he had to just throw in one more final attempt to win her over. I care about you and I want you to be happy. It didn't work. He threw a temper tantrum and left the show, but not without a final threat. I'm done. I'm gonna go get Amber. Amber didn't want him either. And now Clay is crying. I'm just trying to be like, you know, you know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, hold up, I'm sorry to interrupt you during this uh, time of heartbreak for you, but who the f is that? Don't worry about it. Just another random contestant we don't know anything about now playing Clay's therapist and prayer partner. I'm not sure. After that, we never see him again. Well, the other love groups or triangles or squares at this point are aware who's talking to who. There's a little love triangle. You're talking about our love triangle? It's like a big love triangle. It's like a, it's like a love star. And Chelsea, who we know is insecure at this point. If you've seen the show, we just know she's insecure. Just take it, okay? I'm telling the truth. Knows that Jess is also talking to Jimmy. And in my opinion, she mustered up a plan. She's got one final, uh, uh, She's got one final card to play to make him fall for her and not Jess. And that card is definitely gonna prove that love is blind. Do you ever get told you look like a celebrity? Yeah. Do you? I do. I do too. It's uh, MGK. I don't even know if it's MGK's wife or her, his girlfriend. Megan Fox? Did you say you look like Megan Fox? Girl, you know exactly what you were doing. Look how happy this man's face is. The game's over. He knows who he's gonna pick. It's called Love is Blind. And let me tell you, this man, when he sees you, is not going to say, oh yes, you are definitely right. You do have dark hair and light eyes, just like Megan Fox. It's just because I have light eyes and dark hair. That's the only reason. He's going to look at your body and your boobs. So if you aren't on TikTok, this is how the show went super viral. The Megan Fox girl. She did end up responding and she was a pretty good sport out of the whole thing. This would be a great time for the people who have ever told me that I resembled her to, to come forward. Please, <laughs> I'm begging you. But not the point of the show, she cheated. Bad Megan Fox. Anyway, so Jess is positive that Jimmy is going to choose her. She is madly in love with this man that she's never seen before. So much so that it brings her to tears. So happy. I'm so happy for you. She's already planning their future. Like, I would want to marry him. <laughs> I want to have this baby. She just knows that Jimmy is extremely into her just as much as she's into him. She even gives him a whole letter that she wrote in her younger years titled, For My Future Husband. To my future husband, I think about you often and wonder if you spend as much time as I do daydreaming about our future. And Jimmy's feeling, well, confused. And she says, you know, I understand, but I wanted to make sure that you know how I feel. Feel how you feel and do that unapologetically. Yeah, he dumped her. No, I, I, at this point, I love someone else. You ruined this opportunity for me. Be fair, Jess, you did say to do what he needs to do. Unapologetically. And he did, and now you're upset. I've deserved so much more than what you've given me. Girl, what exactly did he 
give you over the past three to four days, woman. <laughs> you really didn't invest that much time into this. I think you'll be okay. She will never be me. And she'll never be a woman like me. So I think it's safe to say that she doesn't handle rejection all that well. I think she's used to using her looks to her advantage. But in this case, the other girl looks like Megan Fox and this girl is just is just a blank figure with a kid who just gave a man she doesn't know a letter that she wrote when she was five to her future husband. And now she's yelling at him. Said I you wanted told someone to else, don't cut me off. Calling him out. You told someone else that you loved them yesterday. This man looks completely closed off. When you see and realize what you missed out on, you are going to choke. Uh, I guess it's also safe to say, Nick Lachey, uh, it is actually about looks, at least for Jess. It's it's actually completely about looks. You are going to need your EpiPen to open up your airways. So Chelsea finds herself in a little pickle because Jimmy says, I love you, Chelsea. <laughs> Ma'am, get up, get the up. Pick yourself up and sit back on the couch. But also, the sensitive, buff goofball who doesn't like to be judged by his buffness, Travis, has something to say to Megan as well. Well, that's what the experiment is. Like, I'm not, no, I'm not scared of that. Because mm -hmm. I love you. It's been five days. How do you feel that I said that? Sick. It makes you sick, right? Like, as if all of this is too good to be true and he's just saying this to prolong his time on national television, right? I'm gonna pass out. We'll go with that. That's a good one. Good answer. Because this is all not normal, right? I'm not the freak here. They're the freak. They're the weirdo. So Jimmy ends up asking Chelsea to be his wife and they are excited to be able to finally embrace each other and continue to get to know each other in a relationship where looks don't matter. <laughs> I can't, I can't run. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and as you can see, Jimmy is in disbelief. He can't even speak, but Chelsea can. <laughs> Girly is tapping her heel. She can't get over how handsome he is. What? You're so handsome. handsome. <laughs> and he just keeps regurgitating the same goober laugh over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps making the you gotta be kidding me face to the cameraman. What? And of course, saying how happy he is. I'm happy. I'm happy. We get it. Yeah, I feel good now. I'm, I feel great. Okay, you don't have to keep saying it. Uh, we believe you. I'm so sweaty. <laughs> you forgot to tell him. You're a little sweaty girly. Well, Megan Fox feels very disconnected and is feeling insecure about how Jimmy feels about her now that he's seen her and thinks that he might be disappointed in what she looks like. Maybe I wasn't what he was expecting. Well, he was expecting Megan Fox, woman. You know he wasn't going to focus on the dark hair and light eyes. Why did she say that? She cheated. The answer that Clay wanted from JD, but JD didn't give him the answer because that would defeat the whole purpose of this experiment. <laughs> she definitely, she definitely lied to me on, on some uh, how she looks. Well, good thing you said you don't care about what she looks like because the personality is what makes the girl, right? I'm attracted to her personality and the love she's given me, and that's all that matters. Even though she doesn't look like Megan Fox, I'm so sweaty. This man didn't even get on one knee until the end. Right when he saw her, he had to go sit on a bench, take a couple breaths, and get himself together. It's been, this last couple days have been like a lot. Let me just show you how all the other couples acted when they met at first sight. Ah, he's so fucking cute. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Hey, D. Yeah. Wow. Look into everything. Like, holy sh. Oh my god. This new. Well, now it's time for the honeymoon. After 10 days of meeting, this will go great. All the couples pack up to go on a tropical romantic vacation with their new fiancés that they just met, and everything is going very wonderfully. For me to like, feel this is so surreal and it's amazing until jimmy sees jd i'm i'm just impressed talking to you thank you so i get her body is extremely impressive she's got a nice body she's worked very hard for it but why did you have to walk over there and leave your fiance and hug the girl with the big butt but you know what ad is completely okay with it his future wife is totally okay with this can i do another tequila soda please they're just having a friendly, appropriate conversation. Are you, are you happy with, we with everything? Like because he's happy. It's a very normal question to ask the woman that you were just complimenting her butt cheeks, especially because he told us he's happy about 85 times already. I feel good, look good, feel good, play good. This totally won't bite him in the butt cheeks later. You were the only person who wasn't coming up to me like being like loving and like, why couldn't we do that? Like everyone else was. Yep, she was really upset by this, but that's okay because 
uh, they had makeup sex about a day after. Jimmy made sure to pull JD aside and thank her for her services. That helped Chelsea and I. I'm glad that you talking about my ass helped you and Chelsea get to the next level. So for the rest of the vacation, nothing really happens. It's a lot of fluff, a lot of wasted time. Most of the storylines are extremely boring and slow. Kenneth is scared that Brittany is too white and can't raise biracial children. Bonnie doesn't want to have sex because Amy's not on birth control and he's scared of having kids at the moment because he's not financially stable. Lay is scared that he can't stay committed to AD because apparently his dick is gonna fall into another chick on accident. I, don't know, I really don't want to let you down, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know how much this means to you and all that stuff and I want to be that guy and I'm like trying my hardest. Laura and Jeremy, their drama comes a lot later when the couples leave their vacation home and go into the real world. And by the real world, I mean the extremely creepy little village that the love of blind CEOs constructed. It's giving Twilight Zone, to be honest. I feel like weird people are going to slowly come out of their house and just stare at you for a while and you think they're normal until you get very close and discover, well, that's not a human. Anyway, when they get home, that's when everything gets very real. Now that the couples have their phones back, Kenneth is always on his phone and ignoring Brittany. I'm excited to have my phone back. Pretty much 90% of the time. Is the bag comfy? Yeah, it's smooth. Oh, it's memory foam. Pretty good. Don't look at your phone too much. He ends up ending the relationship. This is not going to work. Leaves Brittany crying in the kitchen while he goes upstairs to be on his phone. And I guess there's nothing I can do. So they're up. Clay and AD are meeting with each other's family and every time I feel like I'm in a Tyler Perry movie. We talk about like love is blind, mm -hmm. but it's really, are you gonna walk by faith and not sight at this that's point? It. There's really no drama there. I think the only storyline that's with them is that they both work a lot and they need to find time for each other. You know, you got back, she, she works nightlife. She's gonna be coming home at 2 to 3 a.m. Laura and Jeremy are so in love that Jeremy stayed out until 6 a.m. with Sarah Ann, the other contestant, because she randomly was at the same bar as him. But in reality, she actually slid into his DMs the moment that he got his phone back. You left at 10.45 and were out till five something in the morning. But he wanted to make sure that everyone knows that they definitely didn't have sex. He was just consoling her until 6 a.m. in the morning because he dumped her in the pods. So went there, she comes over to me and is like, oh, hi, Jeremy, hugs me, walks away. And I'm like, what was that? In order to not drag things out and make it worse, I was like, do I need to have a conversation with her? Yeah, we, we hung back and we talked about things. He was so confident that he even told his mom this. Came back home, like nothing, Nothing happened. You're lucky it wasn't me, because you wouldn't have just walked in the door. I'd have been sitting there waiting for you. And Megan Fox is pissed off because Jimmy constantly texts, calls, and FaceTimes his best friend, who he's before, but don't worry, it was just a one-time thing. But this is a respect issue. It was a one- You're not a, single. It was a one-time thing. Okay. But okay. you're not single anymore. It's a one-time thing. And to be fair, Chelsea, aka Megan Fox, also is best friends with her ex-boyfriend. She FaceTimes on occasion, but says it's not as much as Jimmy does with this girl. Respect. I'll take a step back from hanging out with girlfriends but if that's what you want. Me. Tell me right now, do you want me to take a step back? Of course I do, and okay. I told you I'm that. I'm not willing to take a step back. Well, then why did you ask her if you weren't going to do it? <laughs> you're just an asshole. Okay then. So now the whole gang gets together and Jessica and Sarah Ann show up. Seeing Jess and, and hearing her again, it's, it's tough. I mean, Jess is very good looking. I am I am attracted to her. Well, remember those words that Jess screamed at Jimmy when he broke up with her before she walked out and walked through the walk of shame? Well, she was right. I care about you a lot and you were my number one still. So I guess the kid isn't an issue anymore. Anyway, on top of all of that, Sarah Ann is tired of people judging her for sliding into an almost married man's inbox. Asking a man that you know is fully engaged and inviting him to still F her. And I'm not sorry, I'm not, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry about I that. I don't think you should be sorry. I've said that multiple times in front of other people to Laura. And also to my mommy. And Jeremy's tired of it too. So they both sail off into the sunset together on jet skis. If you haven't noticed, Laura and Jeremy aren't getting married because he's having a good time on jet skis with Sarah Ann. He's the one that was supposed to protect my fucking heart. It's been like 20 days, good Lord. And now it's time for all three girls to go try on their wedding dresses. I, I, I can't move. It is literally a dream come true for all three of these women. <laughs> everything is going uphill until the next episode when everything quickly goes downhill. But at least we're having three couples getting their happy ending. I don't want to go to the altar. Never mind. Uh, two couples walking down the aisle. 
And you know, wow, look, AD looks beautiful. Everything's going swimmingly. She's finally getting married. This is her goal. Okay, body. You see the material. She's gonna be a married woman. She's gonna have the kids just like her and Clay talked about. I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do. Okay, never mind. You had that girl walk down the aisle, smiled in her face. Tell her she looks amazing. Look at you, dang. All to also tell her. No, thanks. Okay, that's fine. Let's move on. One couple is now walking down the aisle and they actually go through with the wedding. You may seal your vows with a kiss. And that is the complete description of all the important things that happened on season six, Love is Blind. Ugh, mother And you know what? Even after all of that, the biggest thing that pissed me off wasn't the multiple times they said I love you. Mm -hmm. Cause I love you, I love you. Not the 11 hours I wasted when, when the whole series could have been condensed into about an hour and a half. The thing that pissed me off the most were those damn gold cups. They're in every scene, at the pods, in the creepy little town home, in their random outings in the real world. Why the hell are they there? Anyway, now a word from our sponsor, me. This video is sponsored by my company, Proto. Grab a protein chocolate cake donut by clicking the link below. Also, I do have merch check out my dog lovers line and grab a crop top dog mom t-shirt and let it all hang out this summer or purchase a warm sweatshirt and be beautimous like my dog dressed as Princess Ariel. Thank you so much for the support. Well, you guys, that's right. Strap on out, take off your bras, get out of your corsets. The roller coaster is now over. And I have to say, thank you guys so much for getting on with me because I really don't like roller coasters, but it makes it so much more pleasurable when it's with you guys. But I mean, you see that right there? Yeah, that's an extra ticket because they still have the reunion. It airs tonight. And real questions. I've never stayed up till 5 a.m. just chatting. Save that ticket. I'm gonna watch the whole thing and I'm gonna take you back on this roller coaster ride just for a little bit because we gotta get a conclusion to all this. Sarah Ann and Jimmy's relationship could continue after the jet ski ride. Did Jess want to be Jimmy's number one? I was gonna try and keep it so cool and respectful and you went in for a hug and I was like, damn. Are they gonna have those goddamn cups in the reunion? I'm gonna find out tonight and I hope you guys hit the subscribe button so that we can watch it together as well. Because if you didn't know, I'm the only person that covers this. In fact, I'm the only person that gets it on my television. No one else, you can't, you can't find this on Netflix. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. It looks like we finally got our answer to the pending question Nick Lachey keeps asking us. Is love truly blind? No, it's absolutely not. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I'm so sweaty. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like bone crush.